If you find this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, we've previously covered the subject of using InfluxDB and Grafana to visually represent uh, a number of reports. So in this video, we're going to cover the installation of InfluxDB, which is a relatively straightforward operation, and the use of Grafana with it and the configuration of the Grafana dashboard. Now, we're not going to go into the deep uh, details of configuring SSL, but we're going to go through the basic installation. So in this case, we're going to start with the installation of InfluxDB and the client for it. So that's a simple apt install InfluxDB and InfluxDB-client. And that's a straightforward operation that you can do from any um, Ubuntu terminal. Now the installation itself is relatively straightforward and once that's done we're going to use the InfluxDB client to effectively um, connect to the instance whereby we will then be able to see what the databases are that are available to us. So this is using the um, influx command and then using the dash precision RFC 3339 and that basically gives us the connection. Now you're going to do a quick show databases and we can see that we only have the internal one. So we're going to use the create database and for the purposes of this we're going to call it demo. So I'll do a quick show databases again to prove that we now have demo in the list. So that's going to be our database for our Grafana board. Now that part is done. So that's the uh, InfluxDB part created. Next, we are going to go to the Grafana website and we're going to find the current package for download. So obviously the version numbers change a little bit, but otherwise it should be the same basic instructions each time. So we're going to use the wget command here in order to just download the package and then run the uh, installation of that package so we're using the uh, db sorry uh, dpkg-install command once the package is downloaded now that will give us the ability afterwards to quickly run uh, a number of options one would be to set up the grafana as a service the other one we can just run a quick command line and start it as is so if you don't make a mistake of not clearing out your copy paste beforehand and we'll try that again um, we're just going to start this one up so we could start it as a service but in this case I'm just going to start it from the command line because I want to get it up and running quickly for the purposes of this video so the default port once Grafana is running is port 3000 so we're going to go into port 3000 and simply connect to that now, once we're connected, the first thing that Grafana always asks you for is to log in. And by default, the default login is admin and admin. At the point that you log in as admin and admin, it will tell you that effectively those credentials are not a great idea and please change your password. I'm a big fan of that. More applications should honestly make you change password. Now, the next thing we need to do is add a data source. So in this case, we're going to go to our InfluxDB. Now, you can add a URL, and this could be multiple um, options there in terms of it could be somewhere else. In this case, it's a local machine, which is only even suggested in this case. We put in the name of the database, in this case, demo, and we do the save and test. And that's going to come back and tell us that we're able to successfully connect. So if we go to the dashboard for a second and we try to add a new graph, and we're just going to basically edit this graph in order to prove that... Um, the data source is there. So if we go under this, we, we find that we have that influx DB as a data source. And then in theory, if there was any data in there, I could start selecting and uh, work from that. So we effectively now have a up and running dashboard and a influx DB that we can use for creating and generating reports. Important note, Grafana does also have uh, a any file for configuration purposes and this can be found under the exit 
uh, Grafana and then you'll see that there is a Grafana.ini file and if we go ahead and edit that we'll see what configuration options are in there now, obviously it helps if you get the right permissions so let's just rerun that command again but with sudo and one of the things that you can specify in this file is things like uh, ports logging um, configuration of databases to other areas in terms of Grafana can store its information directly into a DB itself so there's, there's lots of options there um, we're not going to go into details but also if you want to configure SSL and other stuff this is where you would point to the keys useful file to know keep that in mind if you're going to use this in a production environment so that about wraps it up for this video if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. And as always, subscribe for more content.